well, as much as we're going to get this morning. Hi, everybody. Um, Agnieszka first got in touch with me um, ooh, about three, four months ago to tell me about um, some really cool design ideas she had for helping to promote Debian more. Um, I'll admit I was skeptical, but I'm an engineer. I don't do this design stuff. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at. At least that's what I said when I first saw it. Then she showed me some of her ideas, and I thought, wow, that's really pretty. That looks gorgeous. And I thought it's probably best if she presented it to the rest of, the rest of us. Um, don't be prejudiced. Please give it, give it a fair go. I think it's really nice. It's a bit different. Um, tell us what you think. Anieska, go for it. Okay. I hope uh, everyone can hear me. Great. So, um, well, actually, the first question that would come up is why does Debian actually need a new design? Um, well, if you're looking at other distributions on the market, they all have, well, more or less good designs too. And uh, I noticed that Debian has been kind of like in the back of all this. And since it's quite known that Debian is a really good distribution, I was wondering, well, why should not Debian have it too? Um, well, of course, as a lot of people, well, maybe not everyone knows that, but um, Debian used to be taken by other, well, derivatives to be used as, because it's so cool that people would take it as a base. And, well, these derivatives would succeed as well. So that's another question. Why should Debian not do the same? So what would this mean, actually, a campaign? What would it really mean? I mean, it's just a bit more than, uh, well, creating some nice, flashy stuff. Uh, it's actually supposed to have a message. It should represent either the project either the audience which it's talking to. So, um, it really will represent the values, the philosophy which is behind the project, uh, which is, well, which can be quite of a challenge uh, because it has to either, well, the people inside have to identify with it, as well as the people from the outside who are actually watching it. So let's see a look of other examples. I took IBM on here. As you can see, they have quite a big, quite a large logo history. Uh, well, logo change, which just does not only mean to be fancy just in a time, but it also shows that there's something moving, like that the project is just not standing still, which is quite obvious here. Uh, well, as you can see, IBM had some name change in here, but I think you can imagine that this logo would not match anymore with this one. And here's another example. Well, another two examples, actually. This is uh, HP and Intel. Um, well, actually, well, you can see here, these two Intel logos are not too much slightly different than the first one and the second one. So sometimes the changes are really small. And if you do it good, people even would not notice it that really um, something dramatically has happened. Now let's go to Debian, the story so far. We've got the penguin, also known as chicken. <laughs> and well, I don't have to say too much about this one. Everyone knows that. Um, so when I started to create a logo for Debian, I just got inspired by a few things. Well. Um, you all know that genie lamp thingy? I think it was, uh, well, I, I found out that it was um, used for the developers, actually. Um, I was quite inspired by that. I was also inspired by this 
positioning of the swirl and the font. Um, so, surprise, let's see what just came up. Okay, so, well, as you can see, the swirl is a little simplified. It has a specific reason, because uh, if it's simpler, it can be printed more easily. It's also easily recognizable. I mean, just notice, if you take a look at your DEPCONF 9 t-shirts and your badge, you see that this logo is a bit different from the one you're wearing at the t-shirt. Um, this would not happen if the logo has is some kind of simplified. Of course, I try to do my best to keep the logo recognizable so that everyone relates it's the swirl. Uh, I've changed the font uh, because um, the one, the old one, was not was a commercial one, and I well actually okay. I mean this logo I've also made with a commercial one, but. As I was using the swirl, I converted it to paths, so it's not a font anymore. But still, if people would like to use a font that quietly looks like this one, I found um, a free alternative, which you can see here. Uh, it looks actually quite similar, and it's free downloadable, so if people would like to make some invitations or small events, whatever, they can use that font. Well, to be exact, these two fonts in here are different. Um, if anyone wants to know what kind of fonts that are, I can tell them later. Um, for this font, it was just one font with different styles. Well, and another thing that I was trying to keep up is, is a kind of flexibility. Uh, you can see here's just the GNU Linux, but as there are so many Debian-related projects, you can write anything you want under this logo. Right. Okay, here we see an example how a nicer website could look like without using Flash. So, well, the main thing is just not, it, not just the design itself. I mean, a, a very important thing would be to simplify the navigation because we really have to think, does the user want to read all that text? I mean, this is just a part of the site. I mean, I just couldn't take the whole picture in my browser window. So that's definitely something that uh, well, people would need to work on and think about what is really useful uh, to give users to read. I mean, it's fine to have uh, ex um, other in well, further information, but maybe it's better to place them as a link. Um, well, so that's basically about website. As you can see, it's possible to realize with CSS. It's not a big deal. Um, probably it just, well, at least for this sample, one graphic would match perfectly. Well, maybe two for the footer. So, let's continue. I've got another example for a boot screen. Well, just to show that um, the design needs to be kept consistent, like in, it would have an influence on everything that um, really relates to Debian. So it, it, as you can see, that's how a boot screen could look like. Right, here you can see a few examples of, uh, well, either you have name badge, name cards, maybe a CD, Here's another sample of a website. Um, it would be much more, actually. It would be the desktop. Uh, it would be um, trade booths. Well, pretty much everything. So it's quite a lot of work to do. I mean, what I've done here is just a start. And to continue this, if it's going to be accepted, of course, um, there will need be people to help and to realize all these things because it's really a lot of work to come. Okay, now let's come to the image campaign. Some of you uh, will have asked me what it actually is. Uh, an image campaign can be, well, something communicative that shows in, uh, well, I would say visualized pictures 
It can be either photographs, it could be drawings, it could be, um, well, illustrations that what I've chosen. Uh, they could be used as posters, they could be used as flyers, um, well, whatever it's needed for. But, well, the main issue is that it's communicating with the audience and telling how cool Debian actually is. Okay, so um, the audience for this campaign is, well, actually two of them. I mean, the server part, I think everyone knows that Debian is famous enough on servers, right? So I targeted basically, well, advanced users who, well, are already using Linux but are totally scared of touching Debian because they would say it's too complicated. Well, I can you assure it's not. I've installed it myself. It was not too bad, actually. But, well, the rumor, <laughs> that it still remains. So that has to be changed. Um, another target, which would be quite interesting, are, well, the normal users who even haven't touched a computer because uh, it's quite proven that if you put someone in front of a computer who doesn't have a clue, it, it really doesn't matter which operating system you give him. So. Well, maybe, well, I don't know if, um, if that would be possible, but sometimes you can also convince Windows users to switch. Uh, well, probably they would be too scared to touch Debian as well, so I would like to take away the fear. So just let's start with illustrations now. Well, what I try to do in here is to put that emotional aspect of, well, the open source community as a whole, which, um, well, a little bit ironic as well, sort of, I mean, and I try to relate to each picture a message, I hope it's readable uh, up there, if not, it's just, can you read it? Oh. Software with, no, hang on, software with passion, it is. Okay. That's the next one. Uh, I hope that's correct up there. Social interactive software. And there's the next one. Your reliable partner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, that's a typical office situation. Isn't it good to have a system that works for you, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Well, that's software with a message. Well, I was almost finishing my illustrations, then uh, Gunnar told me that, well, uh, Debian is also used on an embedded market, which I didn't know at that time, so just I had this idea. And now I've seen the little geek toy you're carrying around, so it's pretty cool. All right. Well, I still could not forget the admins and the geeks around here, so I thought maybe this would relate quite good. Bug fixing is not funny sometimes, but it's a challenge, isn't it? Right, so that's about it. We had these six illustrations. Uh, we have the logo, we have the other designs I made. There are still a lot of things to come, like I said. And, well, are there any questions? Yes? Um, there is a small detail. Uh, you said that um, the logo, you know, the Debian um, text below the swirl, um, was now written in a font that's freely downloadable, and I'd like to know if it is a free font or if freely downloadable is all there is to it. Because I would like a really, truly free logo in all parts. Yes. So well, from what I read, if I did not get it wrong, it is really free. But, I mean... L sorry? 
I think for like beer, yeah. What is the name of that font? Uh, well, this one is called, like I said, I, I took two for, for these two parts. Uh, this one is called, uh, what was it called? Go to Gothic? Something like? The other one is Milford. Milford Black, I think. I have to check that. I actually forgot the style, but I have it, I have it on my computer at home. I can check that. So I, re I really uh, like the um, full page graphics you had up. Uh, the only criticism I have about them is I think the uh, text you had in the top left hand corner needs to be about 20 times the size. Well, um, which one? What were you talking about? This one? Or you mean? These. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, these were printed original like A2, so it's quite big. Well, it's just, it appears bigger when it's really printed, so it might be a bit confusing now. Okay. Um, some of your slides use pink, some of them use blue. Um, mm -hmm. um, can you help us uh, understanding why you choose those colors? Um, well, I actually wanted to keep uh, the identity because I've seen uh, this red is on the website already as well as the blue is. So I just, I just didn't want to put something completely new, which is not the identity of Debian, so I just wanted to keep that. So um, IRC is busily working out the license of your funds, but um, <laughs> uh, so far it's looking good. Um, you mentioned a little bit about the website. Um, mm -hmm. Can you speak a bit more about that, about um, uh, what what you want to do in terms of um, how how does this fit in? Uh, do do you actually want to start uh, comment on the the amount of text that's there and um, well, the text is here for just a sample, actually. I think I've copied it from the first side. Yeah, I've just copied this text to here. Uh, how do you mean? Uh, do you mean how, uh, what I can provide to change the site? Or what, what do you, I mean, can you? Um, just um, uh, speaking during the week, you said that there's, there's too much content on the site, basically, and that you want to uh, rejig that. Uh, does that fit into your um, uh, to your ideas of uh, of the redesign? Is that part of it? Yes, of course. Yeah. Otherwise, it would not make sense. Uh, sorry, I just uh, guess to get an answer here. Um, so, how are you going to um, encourage people to to do that? Ooh. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, a lot of people, I've been he since I've been here to DebConf, uh, everyone is telling me that the website sucks. <laughs> so I think it's just not an issue that I would bring up. It's like w everyone would do this. So I think people who are responsible f for the web really should start listening to it. Um. Between yesterday and tomorrow, Gerfried Ronda posted in his blog the work of Kaylee Soderman since 2007, which is a total redesign of our web pages, all of them, package, website, uh, planet, it's also integrated. And mm -hmm. Kale, Kale had one step ahead and he already did most of the work. Because the WML pages are not easy to migrate and integrate, K already did most of it, and it's implemented, and there's a prototype. So it's one important thing that those need to be aligned. Um, and as I understood, this is not implemented yet, right? No, no. Thank you. I was just about to point out uh, a similar thing that, yes, the website has 
uh, has looked like this for quite a long time and it does need a redo. But so, yeah, I really also wanted to point out that as far as I know, the web team is onto that and uh, working on something as well. Now, uh, as um, has been said, already having prototypes up for testing that do integrate with the whole infrastructure behind and under the website, like WML and all that, and the translation and so. So I was just wondering, uh, have you been in, maybe, maybe these are two, two, two similar things, have you been in contact with the WWW team, um, or have you kind of like checked with them what can be done or how it could be done? I mean, saying that the text should be reduced is one thing, but then you have to decide uh, what text to keep. And then this design, I agree, is very n is nice and uh, recognizable. Um, but I think, um, yeah, you should really check with the WW team what they say and, yeah. and how it can be integrated with the technical infrastructure as well, because this is quite challenging. Well, I, I heard that, uh, well, people said that there were a lot of tries to change things, but from what I've heard, I don't know if it was a rumor, but from, uh, people told that it was really difficult to push some changes. So I was thinking, okay, so, well, maybe before I would start to do all the work in convincing them, I just show this first and see their reactions before anything would be done. Well, the implementing thing, I mean, I could provide some part of the CSS, that's no problem, but I have no idea about the technical background you're using. I mean, normally I would use a content management system for that. I have no idea about the WML stuff, or what it's called? Oh. WML. WML. Um, and, you know, to reduce the text or to, you know, overwork the navigation, I think that's a thing which can be discussed separately as well, or it has to be discussed because, um, well, I'm not the only one who would, well, who would have the right to decide uh, which content should be kept or not, right? So. Um, I guess from what you've been saying, we're not just looking at the website. Yeah. This is to look at the whole feel uh, of, a, of a default installation of the package. Exactly. Uh, so the installer, your initial desktop, if you install desktop, um, the, the, the website, everything together to be integrated. Mm -hmm. And so at this stage, well, I guess we're just looking at uh, how the system feels. And I suppose what was, uh, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, is there enough feeling that this should be done, that we should be integrating a new, f uh, yeah, putting together a new feel, feel and then integrating this into everything. Hey, I believe we've got a release um, freeze coming up in December that uh, we need to get this in by. Well, of course, uh, it would be really cool if some people would just, well, help realizing it. Because I can do this all on my own, which is quite obvious. It's really a lot of work. Um, so, well, I mean, I don't know, when is the next release? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just going to say two things. One is, I think on the font, probably, I think a lot of people seem to be agreed from RSE that we can sort out, if we were going to adopt this design, we can sort out when we adopt the final version that we will use a free font and just assume that we don't need to decide during this talk exactly what that font would be. And a second issue, I, I think, certainly from my point of view, the current work done by various people on the website isn't, doesn't contradict the design work here, because I think the two things can be put together. I mean, yes, there's a lot of technical level work needs done. It's relatively easy if you've done the technical level work to migrate from the current design to plug in um, these kind of suggestions, I think. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's a big deal, too. I mean, just, just a little c CSS, it's really, really not... I, I really try to keep it very simple because, well, otherwise, it would just not fit to the project. Hey. Uh, are you open for a contribution? Uh, if so, in which, le which level? Uh, in, like, uh, do, can you use uh, just one part of your work? Uh, or you mean uh, what, ki what can I provide to uh, help this thing moving on or how do you mean? 
And uh, I mean, uh, usually when people uh, propose some uh, new design or new stuff for Debian, they propose they they uh, show uh, some options and uh, they are open to change and so. Uh, I, it's, I think it's important for the project. It's, uh, I don't know uh, how uh, are you dealing with uh, this. Uh, sorry, you mean the license? Or no, not no. on license. It's, uh, if, uh, if we agree that uh, we should uh, do some change in the swirl on the font and uh, Oh, you mean if you come up with uh, changes for font or for the swirl, if that would be accepted, is that what you mean? Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, well, this is difficult uh, because, well, it would be pretty much the same if you would ask me to code. I mean, the result would be very crappy. Well, <laughs> because I can't code. I would not even have the idea to do this. Um, the thing is, behind all this, there's a whole concept. I mean, people are very welcome uh, to work within this. Like, for example, if the font is downloadable and stuff, and uh, people would make their own badge, uh, name badge or for T-shirts or whatever, they are free to use it and make also new creations with that. But if possible, I would really like to keep this, um, well, the core stuff as it is, because otherwise it's not going to be, well, it's, it's going to kind of break the whole campaign. I hope you understand that. I mean, it's, it's really not, not about keeping people away or something. Exactly. Uh, hi. Um, a couple of things. Uh, one was that uh, the idea of having to make everything consistent was sort of presented as a, a blocker for release. Uh, I don't see that at all because, you know, we've got an incoherent inco image at the moment, so why not continue with an incoherent image for the next release? Uh, the second point is... Um, what was the second point? No, nope. <laughs> I'll think of it. <laughs> Okay, so I know that you, you've done this as um, part of your course. Um, how much work did, did, you, did, did this take for you? A lot. I think I, seven months altogether. Um, it was really, really hard work. Because before uh, well, starting to make the design, I've done a lot of research. And well, at that point, I would like to thank you, Steve, for the support Thanks, Gunnar, for the support. I hope I do not get too much on your nerves because I was um, spamming him with all the stuff I've done so far. For he gave me his comment. I also would think, like to thank to Stockholm. He is not here, but um, well, you, well, they or you guys give me the support. Uh, well, to be able to do my work as good as I could. Um, well, part of of the research I've done, I've also had to. Um, see what, what my experience actually is within this project, uh, to observe how people are in this project, uh, to see, read a little bit about the history of Debian. How is it pursued in the outside world? How would people see it? See if you, well, check the forums, uh, how people uh, describe Debian, and etc. So it was really a lot of work. And then well, later on, I had to think about the right way to express that, well, to express the results I've uh, collected. Um, so it was really, really a lot of work. Cool. Okay, and, when, and you, you presented this already um, in your college, I think you, you mentioned earlier. Yes. How, how well was this received by those people? Oh, it was actually quite a, well, it was my final exams actually, and I was a bit worried because no one really had a clue about open source Linux. I mean, they hardly know how to switch on and off a computer. Um, so, well, I was quite nervous for my presentation now, but, well, I started to talk and explain, and, well, actually, there was just one question um, 
coming up where the name Debian comes from. Luckily, <laughs> I knew the story that it was the thing uh, with Debian and Ian. I think this is true, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was quite surprised because they didn't have any further question, which is a good sign in exams, which means <laughs> that my campaign was pretty clear. Cool. Excellent. Have you had the results of your exams through yet? Yes, I have. I passed. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, one thing that bothers me in many websites which are designed by an artist is that um, when I use a bit larger fonts, things often break. Have you considered what happens, for example, when you, say, double the font size in the web pages? Well, it's, I've actually, I had to do this for, for the presentation for people to see that it's text, right? But I mean, well, CSS can do magic, right? Okay. Um, one more thing I'd like to say, and I think I'm echoing something that was also said in IRC, is that, um, okay, I'll read this straight from here. Okay. Um, it's great to hear that someone has put, the, put, in this, put in so much work into this. I guess making sure she doesn't get flamed until she just walks away is the next part of the game. <laughs> so I think you will, you will probably notice that pushing things in the open source world and, and perhaps Debian in particular might be a bit hard sometimes, but <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys are not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, um, I know it's, it's, it would be a challenge somehow, but I mean, it's not the first time I worked with Debian, so I know what, I'm, what I'll be going through. It, it's fine. I mean, most of you are really nice. <laughs> no, no, seriously. I mean, um, I will not be sort of, um, well, offended or anything like that. Well, it's fine. I mean, I like you guys, and that's why I made it for you. Um, uh, um, I was involved, in, I'm still actually quite involved in the wiki and last year I was really calling to get some people to work on designs and I was really hoping that we, the wiki could use the same templates as, uh, of course, of course. as the website and I'm really happy to have some people uh, working on it. Uh, it's of course very unfortunate to have two teams working on different projects. Uh, we all remember Lin, Linda and Lin Tian, and, um, and sometimes we can ha choose to have two products, uh, Linda and Lin Tian, and it's probably going to be tough to choose and to make everyone happy with the uh, um, project which is retained or whichever. Um, but yeah, I really uh, find it great for all um, you, you, work, you did and the work that Carly did and Thank you for doing it because it's really so great to have it. Thank you. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, one thing about this um, design process that's obvious to me is that it's perceived not as a programming problem that's, that requires knowledge and skill, but a problem that only requires strong opinions and vision. Uh, how do we avoid uh, the, bake, the, <coughs> the bike shedding that's going to uh, explode in the project when uh, people uh, start to see this design and they want to propose different colors, different fonts, different layouts? Well, all you need is GIMP and a few hours, then you can actually do changes to the thing. And obviously, a lot of people is going to join in to well, have their say and put their finger mark on any visual uh, design in Debian? Um, well, I actually already taken this red, uh, like as you see here, on, on the website for the swirl. I mean, I don't know if people had changed um, the color of the swirl that it is now. Um, well, the thing is, people who are arguing uh, in this context are mostly driven by taste somehow and as we know everyone has different tastes so it really doesn't matter if I would take it pink 
people would say, oh, I don't like pink, I hate pink, I prefer green. The other one would say, no, I like purple. And then someone else say, I like blue, so what are you going to do? I mean, you really can't make it suitable, well, tasteful, sort of, for everyone, because tastes are pretty different. But the only thing I can do is to explain the concept and, well, explain why I've chose this color and not the other one. Um, hi. Uh, I, are you the sole copyright author on this? And have you decided on license yet? <laughs> I've been asked that a few times. <laughs> okay, well, I think um, some nice creative commons share alike license would be fine for the project, I guess. Well, maybe, um, yeah, or GPL. Yeah. Um, hi. Um, personally, having no idea about accessibility in general, did you check how this design um, works out for blind people and how, uh, how does it <laughs> compare um, to the original website? Oh, well, I never tested uh, the original website. I, I've got some, I'm partially sighted myself and I have some uh, blind friends too. Uh, I don't know how they get along with, with the old website. But, um, well, it is possible to keep things semantic on a technical background so that people can read it. If you just avoid gr uh, too many graphics and put the alternate text on them, it should be fine. Well, I try to do it as accessible as possible. I think, well, the design is so simple that actually uh, it should be possible to keep it accessible as well. I mean, this is just, uh, this would be basic CSS, really. I just wanted to follow up to something you said um, two minutes ago, which was um, uh, all you could do is explain why you chose that particular colour. And I just wanted to be mischievous and ask, why did you choose that uh, the particular <laughs> colour? <laughs> oh, I, didn't I mention that already? Uh, well, just take a look at the website. You have this blue in here and you have the red here. Well, actually, I was a little bit undecided as well, which, which one to choose. And when I was doing the illustrations, I thought, well, these colors kind of like match somehow. And I was thinking, OK, I'll keep those two. So that's why I wanted to keep the identity a little bit. I just didn't want to make the change so dramatic because people do relate to that blue and red, reddish. Okay, looking around in the audience here and on IRC, you, you've got quite a reasonable range of comments. I mean, hopefully mostly positive from what I can see. Um, but my next question would be, assuming you have enough asbestos clothing, um, <laughs> what would you do next? What would be your, well, your plan for implementing this? Okay, so, of course, um, I will help well, as much as I can, as much it's, as it's possible for me. Um, I would provide the design needed, for instance, uh, if they would be a uh, desktop theme or the boot screen, like, I, like you've seen. No, hang on. Um, I would, well, try to get some ideas for a um, trade booth well, I would really continue to work on this because, well, like I said in the beginning, this is just a start. And of course, I can leave you guys alone with that. So I would really, really like to help. And anything that is needed to be done, I'll do it. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> just a very final tiny remark uh, concerning the blue that seems to, to confuse some people. Um, I think. Uh, as far as like trademarking and recognition and all that goes, you're very safe with the pink or the purple or the red or however it's called. Um, because yeah, really everybody knows that as the Debian color. As far as I know, the blue was really mostly picked because it contrasts well with the pink. So you can actually see the, uh, the blue dots on, on the pink stuff. So I, don't, I think if you just stick with the pink, everybody will say, ah, yeah, sure, that's Debian, all right. Well, of and um, yeah, the, the blue was mainly chosen for uh, visibility reasons. I don't think any particular 
there's any particular connection with Debian. So, yeah, I guess I just wanted to explain that maybe that's why some people are a bit confused by the blue. Well, yeah. Well, actually, of course, it's, it's flexible. I mean, for instance, if uh, you would make a vote which design you prefer, and people would say, well, they like the blue, but they prefer in red, well, no problem. This can be changed, of course. I mean, I've, I've heard a lot of people prefer this one, actually. I don't know how about you, but these things definitely can be switched. I mean, okay, the illustrations, I would rather keep in the, those colors, um, if, if that's okay. But, um, yeah, sure, I mean, the swirl uh, could be done in, in red as well, yeah. Uh, about the fonts, uh, I, I know they're very similar, the free one and the one you've used for your designs, but, uh, well, I can see the difference. And I think, I've always thought that it would be particularly cool if Debian actually had its own font. And <laughs> we do have a package called Metafont for doing that sort of thing. We're, and designing it an entire font is a nightmare. It but, is, yeah. <laughs> uh, designing a font that can carry six letters and then building on that is a different thing. And we could, I mean, would you be interested in working with some font geeks to generate a font either somewhere between those two or maybe even preferable to the one that you chose originally? Um, I don't know. I mean, there are, there are licensing issues because we can't go too close to the, uh, the one you chose originally because then we just ripped it off. No, no, no. The thing is, well, on this font... Oh, if you're, okay, well, if we're allowed to do that, we could do that. But maybe you'd actually prefer a very slightly different font from the original one. No, no, no. That's fine. I mean, this font is, is actually in, within the logo. It's not a font anymore because, as you see, I removed the uh, I dot, uh, so I converted it to paps. So in that case, it's not a font no, anymore. No, no, I'm not talking about the strict, whether it's a license issue or not. Now I understand oh, you that you've turned it into a font. I mean, if I would like to create a font, or well, I was I was wondering if if we have I imagine we have some font geeks oh. amongst us, and there is a package for generating font fonts that uh, is widely available, and <laughs> uh, there may be an interest in generating a font that is like that, so that we can use it and call it the Debian font, and. Uh, that's it, you know. Well, I mean, if this tool is easy to use and it gives you fast results, <laughs> fine. <laughs> but the thing is, creating fonts is, is a really, really nightmare. You, you, oh my God, I've just tried it once and after five minutes I thought I'm going to throw my computer against the wall. I mean, I really, I'm, I really don't have patience to do this. It's so tricky and it's so much work. I mean, I would, well, first of all, I mean, uh, this is too much detail. I just, I, I can't do this. This would be too much. I would sit, I don't know, for m how many days to make one letter. It's just... Uh, I really wasn't <laughs> suggesting you do it. But if someone is interested in doing it, they could spend the rest of their life having fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So referring to the different colour schemes that you're using, I think for the large poster-sized images, I think it's a really good idea to have at least two um, different colour themes that we can use, and I do like the two that you've chosen. Cool. Uh, one thing I wonder about, um, colour blindness is pretty common around, uh, how do we make sure that colours picked are good for colorblind people? Um, I made the design quite, well as you can see, the contrasts are quite big. I also made the logo that it can be printed on a you know, black and white copy machine. So, well, I think the color issue would not be too, um, well, let's say important or something. I mean, it would just not, um, decrease the, the usage of it. So that's why I kept the contrast very. I mean, I don't know how people deal with the old swirl with the same color. <laughs> I know a, uh, a font designer who does use the um, free 
software font package and, uh, and does uh, design for free software projects. So how interested would you be in, um, in working with him so that you could design the font artistically in the way that you would like and then have him implement at least the six letters for that as a start? Um, it, you know. I mean, would it just work out if, it, if I would give it to him, the logo, and he would do it? I mean, because I'm really terrible at these things. <laughs> This is just, I mean, as I said, I would, I would have, well, a lifetime fun with this. The, the problem, I guess, is that that is then a copy of an existing font, and well, copyright would kind of naturally apply to that. No, so no, 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 it's not, not anymore, because like I said, as, long, as soon as you convert it to paths, it's not a font anymore, it's just a graphic. So it really, this issue does not exist, plus, as you saw, uh, there is the free alternative. So this can be downloaded, and from what I know, it's been already checked that it's free. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so that, that's the thing. If is a weird thing. It's not like software. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> could, could you please repeat that? Yeah, I just... Oh. All I said is that um, copyright and so on for fonts is weird and not the same as for software. You, there are weird things where you're, you can get away with legally taking someone's font, printing it out, and redesigning a new font from that, and it counts as that's allowed. That's why normally the big font foundries try to protect hard the names of fonts as trademarks, because font designs are actually quite hard to um, protect under copyright or whatever. Which, so yeah. in that case, you have to choose a different name for that somehow from what I got it. But well, like I said, for the original logo that I've done, it's paths. It has to be paths because otherwise I would not be able to uh, manipulate it and, and take away the dot from the eye. I just wanted to say that I like the idea of having uh, an identity for Debian and I really look forward to, uh, to have those things done. And, and Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. Just to be, well, as, as everybody is here, uh, technically correct, you, don't, you do not have to t uh, take away part of the graphic element of a font in order to get that word. Uh, for example, uh, Turkish includes a letter that's a dotless lowercase, lowercase i or even a dotted uppercase i. So you, uh, I, I don't know the difference in pronunciation, but th that letter should exist as it is in several fonts. So, and they would be legally fonts without having to translate into into curves, and uh, well, uh, and there is a point in this because well, I am sure you have seen all kinds of uh, Debian T-shirts from all over the world, mm -hmm. which have something that looks like an extension to the whatever font was used for the original design, that are that that are well basically extrapolated. Because we don't have access to that font. You mean the the original one, what is used now? Okay. Well, I, I actually, I must admit, I've never heard about that font too. After someone told me that it's non-free, I was like, what? <laughs> so, well, uh, I have really no idea about the special character support, really. I mean, I've just chosen the fonts that would fit for the logo, basically. But, well, in the end, I think it's fine to use Helvetica or some other standard font, too. I mean, if you, well, I would say, if you um, put it nicely together, the font would match. It's, it's not a big deal. I mean, mostly you need these things to create some text rather than um, headline or, well, the logo will remain like this anyway. So, well, I can help with that too. I mean, if there's um, help needed to make flyers or something, well, I'm, I'm there to help. It's n not a problem. Uh, about the, uh, mm, the web team, have you talked with them? 
I've talked with a few people here on DEPCONF. Um, well, they said, let's see how the reactions will be from the others. And they told me a few technical stuff that I really did not get. <laughs> uh, I'll just try to explain that the design is just pure CSS, actually. And I said, well, if, if I can do that, I mean, maybe I can just tell the col colors of the links or of the text and the navigation, and the rest is just up to them because, well, like I said, I don't have idea about the WML stuff you're using. So. <laughs> um, uh, now that you've passed your exam, um, what are your life plans and... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, well, I've, you've obviously been spending a lot of your time on that. Um, how much of your time will be, you be able to spend on it in the coming months or in years? Ooh, <laughs> well, um, I'm flexible. And, well, of course, I'm actually looking for, fr for freelance work. I'm, I'm not a type to work in agencies because, well, it's really not for me. So if I would do some freelance jobs, I can, of course, uh, well, schedule my time the right way. So it's just not you don't have time, you have to take the time. So don't worry, I will not disappear. Um, the, current, the, the current old logo is also being used in a more horizontal way with the swirl next to the text. Do you supply such a variant? Sorry? The current old logo is also being used with the swirl next to the text for more horizontal outlines. Uh, Do you supply such a variant? Would it be possible for you? Which one? I don't. Uh, you uh, mean that the, one the, the swirl said, is next to the. One or two back. Backwards, please. Yes, at the top of the old website. Oh. Um. Well, not, not really, because I got inspired by this genie lamp here. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is, the recognition needs to be kept. And if you put the logo there and the other time you put it underneath or wherever, it's, it's just not going to be consistent. So I tried that when I, when I was working um, on the first samples. I've tried a few variations, and I just saw it sucked. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to see a, a variation for uh, dark backgrounds. Uh, just to, it's important for printing and shirts. Yeah, I could do that. Well, when, as soon as I go home to my computer, because uh, I thanks, I could do some. No problem. Well, maybe just to have a glimpse, you can see it on the boot screen, so it's pretty flexible to use. Okay, uh, I'd just like to thank you very much for your presentation. And, You're uh, welcome. Uh, we look forward to seeing effectively, uh, I guess, a marketing pack telling us exactly what we can use in what format um, in, in the near future to, to, to start to adopt. So thank you very much. Thank you. There are, there are one or two more minutes. Um. Well, yeah, I also would like to echo the thanks, and I really uh, like the new logo and the images and everything, so uh, my reaction is very positive to all of this, um, and would like to encourage you to keep beating us over the head with some sensible design, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because really the, the current web page is quite difficult. But... Um, <laughs> I, I just wanted to make a comment about the horizontal usage of the, the swirl uh, doesn't quite work for the word debconf, like we're using behind you on the poster, uh, because there is no I in the word. Mm -hmm. So it can't, in some cases, uh, putting the image on the side might be necessary. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, this just relates to the logo. Um, so, well, these things would be... Well, of course, I mean, each DAPCONF is in, in a different country each year, so 
this also needs some research and work before that to create, uh, well, accurate logo for each DevCon, of course. So um, I think each logo for each DevCon will maybe not differ too much when it comes to the font, or, but uh, well, would have some symbols integrated with the swirl, uh, which would be typical for the country, for example. I don't know if you guys remember uh, the design I've done for DAPCON 6. Uh, there were these tacos with chilies and cables inside. Some of you might remember that one. So on that part, we're quite flexible. Right. Um, I think that's the end. Thank yeah. you for being brave enough to come and stand in front of a room full of engineers and tell them <laughs> how things should look. <laughs> Hopefully you've not, you've not been scared away too much by nasty questions about fonts and stuff. No, no, it's fine. I mean, I've prepared to that. <laughs> um, thank you very much. You're welcome.